a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Jerry Heller Gerald Elliott, Jerry, Heller was an American music manager and businessman. He was best known for managing West Coast Trap Supergroup and Gangster Rap Pioneers NWA and Eazy-E. He rose to prominence in the 1960s and 70s, importing Elton John and Pink Floyd for their first major American tours, and representing Journey, Marvin Gaye, Van Morrison, War, Eric Burden, Crosby Stills, and Nash, Ike and Tina Turner, Credence Clearwater Revival, Otis Redding, The Who, REO Speedwagon, Black Sabbath, Humble Pie, Styx, The Grassroots, and The Standals, among many others. In the mid-1980s he worked with R&B and hip-hop acts like Michelle, World Class Wreckin' Crew, JJ Fad, the DOC Egyptian Lover and LA Dream Team. Heller played a role in the emergence of West Coast trap music when he managed Ruthless Records, with Easy e and Discovered, signed or managed the likes of NWA, The Black Eyed Peas, Above the Law, The DOC and Bone Thugs in Harmony. Drive, Dre brought the D.O.C. and Above the Law to Ruthless in the early days and Easy bringing, Bones, in later years. Heller suffered from a heart attack while driving, resulting in an auto accident. He later died on September 2, 2016 in Thousand Oaks, California. Early Life and Education Born to a Jewish family in Cleveland, Ohio, Heller served in the United States Army and attended college at University of Southern California, and started working in the agency business in 1963. Heller's father is alleged to have been a low-level Jewish mobster. After working at Coast Artists, Associated Booking and the Chartwell, he opened the Heller Official Agency in Beverly Hills, California, which grossed $1.9 million during its first year, $3.7 million the second, $5.80 the third, and over $7 million its fourth year of operation representing rock stars The Who, Grand Funk Railroad, Black Sabbath, Humble Pie, and Black Oak Arkansas as well as writers at the time Carly Simon, Van Morrison, and Cat Stevens. He later bought out partner Don Fischel who went on to package independent TV productions. Heller believed that a key factor in keeping acts working between or after a hit record was to not be greedy and package his own clients together, but tour them in saleable packages with other headline acts that were clients of other agencies. Career Starting in the mid-1980s, Heller represented rap musicians as the genre became popular with the record-buying U.S. public. His work with Ruthless Records and with Easy e formed the foundation for the successes of Priority Records and Interscope Records. To date, Ruthless Records has sold in excess of 110 million records, not counting singles. The label included artists and producers such as Dr. Dre, whose careers Heller helped establish, and sold millions of records for Interscope Records, Priority Records, Atlantic Records, MCA Records, and Sony Records. At the time of Easy's death, and Heller's departure from Ruthless Records, the company was generating revenue in excess of $10 million per month. Managing the Rise of West Coast Trap In the 1980s, Heller began managing acts on the nascent Los Angeles hip-hop scene, many of whom recorded for the now-defunct McCola Records in Hollywood. He managed both CIA which Ice Cube was a member of, and the world-class Wreckin' Crew which included Dr. Dre and DJ Yeller. On March 3, 1987, he met Compton, California rapper Easy E, and the two became co-founders of Ruthless Records. Under the direction of Heller and Easy, Ruthless Records had six platinum releases in three years. Supersonic, Easy Does It, Straight Outta Compton, No One Can Do It Better, Michelle's self-titled debut, and Niggas For Life. After NWA, NWA broke up in 1991, with Ice Cube and Dr. Dre departing and aiming criticism at Heller and Easy in diss tracks. However Ice Cube's diss tracks only occurred after the remaining members of NWA initiated things on the EP 100 Miles and Run In. Both Ice Cube and Dre accused Heller of breaking up NWA with the way he managed the group. Dr. Dre later recalled, the split came when Jerry Heller got involved. He played the divide and conquer game. Instead of taking care of everybody, he picked Easy to handle it, and Easy was like, I'm taken care of, so fuck it. 
Ice Cube, in his diss track, No Vaseline, accused Easy of being too much under Hella's influence and both of them exploiting the rest of the group, Easy E, MC Ren, Dr. Dre, and Yella. Also, it's a case of divide and conquer, cause you let a Jew break up my crew, and, house nigga gotta run and hide, yelling Compton, but you moved to Riverside. He married Gail Steiner his girlfriend since 1990 and 1996. They divorced in 2014. Book Heller's memoir, Ruthless, a memoir, written with Gil Reville, was published by Simon & Schuster slash Simon Spotlight Entertainment in 2006. In the work, Heller addressed many events that he had previously remained silent on. With regard to the FBI letter sent after the NWA song, Fuck Tha Police, Heller wrote that the letter was actually a rogue action by a single pissed-off bureaucrat with a bully pulpit, named Mil Tyleridge who was falsely purporting to represent the FBI as a whole and that the action, earned him a transfer to the Bureau's backwater Hartford office. He also wrote that he removed all sensitive documents from the Office of Ruthless Records in case of an FBI raid. He denied the accusations of financial impropriety. In particular, he wrote that Ice Cube didn't understand finances and alluded to rumors of his own financial impropriety on his own record label. However some members of the group have said that their first check was not released until they signed contracts, which they did not have read, by outside lawyers or managers. So it stands to reason that the same scenario happened to Ice Cube, which he has maintained was the final straw, and reason he left the group. Heller defended himself in his book stating, NWAS song publishing royalties were always hefty, because the band sold so many records. Ruthless took 25 cents out of each dollar of publishing royalties. Again, a fairly customary bite, some labels take 100%. The other publishing companies involved also took 25 cents. Of the 50 cents left, the lyric writer took 25 cents, and the beat writer took 25 cents. Dre composed the beats for every song NWA ever put out, so he always got that quarter out of every dollar coming in, less deductions for all his sampling. You wrote a lot of the words, Cube. So some of the time you took a quarter bite out of those dollars. There were quite a few times though, when you had to share with co-writers, such as Dre, Yella, the DOC Easy, or Ren. So you had to share your quarter. It's not robbery. It's not a Jewish conspiracy. To rip off the poor artist what is is, O'Shea, is mathematics pure and simple. You received every single penny that was coming to you if you say you didn't then you are lying. Of the song, No Vaseline, Heller wrote that he didn't believe that Ice Cube was genuinely anti-Semitic and was nothing, but, pro-Ice Cube, but had exploited prejudices in the Afro-American community to help his career. He claimed that the deathbed letter from Easy e was a forgery. Eric would never have put out a letter that was that corny. Heller wrote that Easy e had eight children and not seven as the letter stated, of the D. Barnes incident in which she was beaten by Dr. Dre in the midst of the feud between Ice Cube and the remaining members of NWA. Heller called the incident, disgraceful, and that he was, left to clean up the mess. Heller said that Dr. Dre was generally non-violent, and mild-mannered, but had drunk too much on the night. In a 2013 interview, on the Murder Master Music Show, Heller said that Easy e had planned on killing Suge Knight, but Heller was able to talk Easy e out of it. Heller said he was in his office. When Easy e told him, you know this guy shook Knight. Well, I'm gonna kill him. This guy's gonna be a problem. And I'm gonna kill him. Heller said that he told Easy it didn't make sense to kill Knight and it wouldn't be worth the risk. Citing that Ruthless Records was the most successful startup record company ever, making $10 million a month with only six employees and, as Heller put it, not even having a typewriter in their office. Heller said that, given everything that had transpired afterward, he regrets talking easy out of it. You know something? I should have let him kill him. I would have done the world a favor. He would have done it, for sure by himself. He always rolled by himself and he was fearless. I think that he was going to go do it. I took him seriously. He was right, and I was wrong. Straight out of Compton lawsuit. Heller was portrayed by actor Paul Giamatti in the 2015 NWA biopic film, Straight Outta Compton. In October 2015, 
Heller filed a lawsuit against several members of NWA, NPK Universal and others involved in the production of Straight Outta Compton. He has also filed lawsuits against rappers Dr. Dre and Ice Cube. The lawsuit claims, the film is littered, with false statements that harm the reputation of and aim to ridicule and lower him in the opinion of the community and to deter third persons, from associating or dealing with him. Producers for the film, which included Ice Cube and Dr. Dre, filed a countersuit in February 2016, to have portions of the Heller suit thrown out. In June 2016, U.S. District Judge Michael Fitzgerald dismissed nearly all of Heller's lawsuit, but agreed to allow one key claim to continue. Despite Heller's death in September 2016, his attorney Mickey Shapiro has indicated the lawsuit will continue. Death Heller, who had a history of heart problems and diabetes, was driving on September 2, 2016 when he suffered a heart attack, crashed his car, and later died at a hospital in Thousand Oaks, California. He was 75 years old. Heller's lawyer blamed the depiction of him in the film Straight Outta Compton as a contributing factor in his death, with TMZ stating the film placed him under a tremendous amount of stress. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like